again. Okay, all right. Um, this is, all right, so um, we will pick up uh, where we left off and we'll talk about um, pandas. And so now I want to show um, some summaries and pivot tables. This is uh, kind of doing some group aggregation with um, with uh, with pandas here. Okay, so let me uh, start the kernel and we'll restart things. Okay. All right, so as always, we'll um, we'll load up uh, pandas as pd and numpy as np, as as is convention, um, and then we'll um, let me introduce the idea of a, a hierarchical index. Okay, so a hierarchical index basically allows us to do kind of some group by operations here. So here um, uh, we are going to just create a, a simple uh, array with these values, four, five, six, eight, 10, 12, whatever, okay? And I'm gonna have my index itself will be a two-dimensional array, okay? So you can see the index is um, not just the letters uh, A, B, C, or the numbers one, two, three, but, um, um, but I've got this kind of this this hierarchical or, or this two dimensional thing, and this is going to form a hierarchical index. Okay, so um, so if I look at my series, we can see those values four, five, six, eight, whatever. Okay, and then the index is basically this column of A's and the column of four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six. Okay. Um, so uh, we can ask, what is the index itself? The index itself is this, um, we get what's called a multi-index, right? And it's kind of this uh, kind of, uh, I, I guess, a list of tuple-like objects, all right? It's an index, but it's basically this two-dimensional array where one column is A, A, B, A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 and the other column is four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six, okay? And so if you have this multi-index, okay, with kind of this two-dimensional thing, um, so column of Bs, you can say, hey, select, I want um, everything with B here. Um, and, uh, and we will get um, basically just the rows um, for that correspond to B, okay? Um, oh, I, I guess the values are, you can think of A as one, B is two, and C is three. And so if you do four, five, six times A, one, you get four, five, six, and then four, five, six times two, you get eight, 10, 12, and four, five, six times three, you get 12, 15, 18. So here I can say, hey, select, uh, use the dot loc to um, locate all kind of records with, um, with B, and we get that. And so you'll notice it just drops the top level index Okay, it drops the Bs because now that I've kind of subset to B, um, I only have the four, five, six. There's there's no sense in keeping kind of the column of Bs there. If you want to select all the rows where the second level index is a five, okay, you can do that as well. So here, um, the dot loc here, we're going to, it's going to be select via the outer index, then the inner index, and we get um, we get this. Okay, so now I get all the rows with uh, with five as the inner index, and we will get A and B and C. So we get the corresponding A five, the B five, and the C five. And we can see we get yeah five, ten, and fifteen. All right, there we go. Okay. Um, and uh, and then this itself is a series, and and the index for this is going to be ABC. Okay, um, and then yeah, so that's uh, that's what we have for the series. Okay, um, there is uh, an unstack function. Okay, the unstack function will take your multi-index. Okay, and then um, an unstack. It's kind of like 
if you think, if you're familiar with uh, the tidyverse, and if you're familiar with dplyr and pivot wider, um, unstack will do that. So here, um, you can think of this as I've got a column of A's, B's, and C's, and then four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six. What we can then do is we can unstack it, okay? And then I will get um, all of the a, uh, fours will become columns here, okay? So, so rather than A, four, five, six, and B, four, five, six, and C, four, five, six, okay? We get uh, A and then column four, column five, column six, and B, column four, column five, column six, and C, column four, column five, column six. Um, that's basically what a normal distribution table does. If you think about like, um, I don't know. So you have like, a, if you think about like a normal distribution, like this, we basically just unstacked the numbers, you know, 0 0.00, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13. Those basically just got unstacked. So rather than just having one long column that starts from 0, 0.00 and going all the way to 3.49, we've unstacked the hundreds places into a column of 0, 0, 0.00, column for 0 0.01, and so on and so forth. It's kind of a, that's basically what we've done. So we've taken, uh, but anyway. Uh, here I've got A4, A5, A6, B4, B5, B6, and we've um, we've unstacked it into um, A4, A5, A6 uh, across like that. Okay. Um, if you ask, hey, what is uh, um, what is the index of this after I unstack it? Okay. Now we just have uh, the rows for A, B, and C. Okay. Um, we have that. Uh, and then the shape of this thing, this is going to be what three by three, right? The um, the inverse of unstack is going to stack. So if I take this thing, data dot unstack, and if I call stack on it, so look, I'm I'm just chaining um, chaining methods. Data dot unstack itself is a data frame. So I can chain the method dot stack. Data to unstack gives me that three by three data frame, and I can do dot stack, and it stacks it back up into this series. Okay, um, so that's what we get. So it's kind of the um, so I started off with this series here. If I unstack it and then stack it, I end up back at the same place. Okay. Um, another thing you can do is you can take your multi-index and you can swap the levels. So, so here I've got A, 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 B, 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 and C, C, C on the outer index and four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six on the inner index, okay? I can swap them and now um, A, 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 B, 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 and C, C, C are on the inner index and I've got uh, four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six on the outer index, okay? Um, and so now if I want to um, say, I want to, after swapping the levels, if I want to select everything with an A, I have to put in um, colon comma A uh, to get all the rows with A, right? If I don't put in this colon comma, it's going to search the outer index for A and it's going to say, hey, I can't find this, right? We get a key error that says um, there's no A at, at least at the outer index, I can I can ask for you know, uh, oh not 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 uh, character four, but uh, numeral four. Okay, and then we get you know four, eight, and twelve. Um, but uh, here I can say, hey, give me everything that corresponds to A, and we get that. Okay, four, five, six. Um, if when you do swap level. It preserves the original order A A A B B B C C C. If you um, if you want, you can call sort index after swapping the level, and and now it has sorted the outer index first. 
So all the fours, then all the fives and all the sixes, and then it arranges the inner index. It sorts those and you get four, 4a, 4b, 4c, 5a, 5b, 5c. And if the uh, if it is if the outer index is sorted, rather than repeating, right? So here you have everything kind of printed out. Um, it kind of tr tries to make it easier to read by just putting four and then leaving these things blank. So you can kind of see that these are all kind of uh, related to, you know, this is going to be 4a, 4b, 4c, but just kind of for visual ease, it doesn't print all the fours there. Okay, again, um, all of these things do not affect the underlying data. So the underlying data is just this series with um, uh, where we have A, B, C on the outer index and four, five, six on the inner index, okay? Um, all right, so here's a question. If I do data dot swap level and then unstack, what am I gonna get? What will my rows be and what will my columns be? So the original data is A, B, C on the outer index, four, five, six on the inner index. If I swap the levels and then unstack them, okay, well, all right. Oh, thank you. Thank you for uh, responding. Yes, the columns will be A, B, C, and the rows will be four, five, six. Exactly, right? So we swap the levels and then unstack. The columns are A, B, C, and the rows are four, five, six. Yep, exactly right. Um, compare that to just unstacking the data directly. When we unstack, then the, the inner index becomes the columns. Uh, so then we get columns four, five, six. And the rows are ABC. So basically, these, these end up kind of being transposes of each other. I can call that T. And we would get the same thing, right? Um, but swap levels and then unstacking is kind of like unstacking and then transposing it. Okay. Um, all right. Once uh, you can call, um, so keep, oh, I'm getting some kind of delivery. That's all right. Um, we'll, uh, okay, so I can call sum on this thing, okay? And um, and so again, here's my original data, A, B, C on the outer index and four, five, six on the inner index, all right? When you call um, the sum on it, it uh, it's just gonna sum the entire thing, but then you can call group by, and you can say group by level zero or group by level one, okay? So um, group by will group by zero will will give us um, the top level index, which is the ABC. Um, so the original data, not not after swapping the levels, um, will get uh, group by level zero and sum, and that'll give me the sum of the A's and the B's and the C's. Group by level one will give me the sums of the fours, the fives, and the sixes. All right, so I think I think that's good. Okay, let me give you your first view quiz answer, which is the letter D, D as in dog. Okay. All right. Um, that that's just uh, working with a multi-index for series. Um, most of the time, you'll probably be working in a data frame, and so let's. Let's create uh, a data frame. All right, so here I've got um, rows, all right? And the row uh, is gonna be called, uh, the, I guess the index, uh, I've got row alpha and row beta. And then my column headings are one, two, and three. And uh, and so, we, you know, the name I gave to the columns as a group will be the number. Okay, so we've got number one, number two, number three. And then I just got the numbers one through six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. If I stack them, okay, this is going to create a multi index. Top level will be um, alpha and beta, the letter, and then the inner index will be, um, I guess, the, the next level index will be the one, two, three. And so this, I think, behaves exactly as we would expect. Um, stack them, and we get, uh, so basically, we're going to kind of pivot 
this uh, row of one, two, three, and I get this um, this series here. Again, unstack and stack are inverse operations. So if I stack them and then unstack them, we get back our original thing. You can um, specify how to unstack. Traditionally, uh, when it unstacks, it unstacks kind of the lowest level uh, index. So in this case, uh, um, unstack one would, um, would do this unstack zero. Here, we're, we're gonna basically unstack the, the top level index, which will be the alpha and beta. So now we'll get rows one, two, three, and columns alpha and beta, right? So unstack default, we'll do this. Unstack level one or index level one here. This will give us an error because there's no level two index, but we can unstack the level zero index. So this is what it looks like um, after stacking. Letter will be the level zero and number will be the level level one, zero index. Thing. You can also unstack by the name of the thing. So we can say unstack the letters. This will give us this. Basically the letters become the columns. Or we can say unstack the uh, the number index. Um, how come the argument for group by isn't axis? Oh, sorry, I missed your question. Going back to here. Uh, level, um, let me see. Data group by, okay, there is an axis. You can group by axis equals, all right, let's see. Let's see what we get when we do data dot group by. Axis equals zero. Can't just apply one of by and level. Mm, yeah, level. I don't know. Level. Okay. All right, I gotta fill around with this. Here's animal article indexes. Okay. Uh, I got to figure out what this axis argument does. Next, group by level. We have a group by axis. I don't see examples of group by axis. By equals B. Split along rows or columns. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to fiddle around with that. Uh, give you some more, more things. Um, but yeah, uh, you group by I guess the level of your your hierarchical index there, or or uh, I guess the name by which you want to um, do groupings. Okay, um, so here look. Let's just kind of um, let's see what see what happens here, um, and I, I think we'll we'll see some examples as we do some uh, data wrangling here. So um, okay, here I've got uh, a series, two series, S one and S two. Okay, uh, series one, uh, I've got A B C D uh, zero one two three for my uh, the value zero one two three. And then the index is A, B, C, D. And in series two, I've got um, values four, five, six, and the index is C, D, E. And I'm gonna kind of put these two together, all right? And we'll give it um, we'll give it these keys. So when we do that, um, 
I'm I'm just kind of concatenating these things. I got A B C uh A B C D going with um kind of our first series, and then um C D E is part of our second series, and then we gave it um keys one and two, so that when I kind of join these things together, it, it produces this kind of hierarchical index. Right, so the level zero, I have the ones kind of indicating which series it came from, and then the second is kind of the corresponding ABCD. All right, and so here you can see that if I try to unstack this, okay, um, we're gonna it's gonna take this inner index, all right, and it will make the columns, and we see up here I've got uh, an A and a B, you know, C uh, series one and two both have. C's and D's, but A, B, and E are not common to both. Um, they're not part of the intersection. And so those will introduce uh, NANs, right? So um, so we have A, B, C, D for series one and C, D, E for series two. And so I can unstack them, but, but it introduces NANs for where we didn't have a 1E or a 2A or a 2B, okay? If I um, if I stack them back up, um, those NANs just kind of disappear. Um, but if you want to kind of preserve the NAN, you can say drop NA to the false, and it will kind of preserve the the NAN E and the NAN A and B for uh, series two. So um, so you can do that. Drop NA. So traditionally, dropping the NAs will uh, will do that. Okay. All right. Let's. Let's just kind of play around with um, a simple data set. This is, um, I think this is just a made up data set, fictional data set, or I don't know, maybe it's real. Okay, compiled by Skipper Siebold from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, except for the unemployment rate, which came from Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay, so there is a real data source going from 1959 to 2009. Okay, so looking at some old data here. And we will read that in using pandas.read underscore CSV. Should be um, right here when you um, loaded this up. Okay, um, we can ask for the info on this CSV file and we can see, okay, we got 203 rows, all right. Um, and these are the columns. We got year, quarter, GDP. What are these things? Cons, in whatever, something. <laughs> the, okay. Consumption expenditures, gross domestic product, GDP, consumption expenditures, uh, private domestic investment, and federal consumption expenditures and gross investment. Okay and real DPI, private disposable income. Okay, I don't know what half of these things are, but that's okay. All right, let's just kind of see what we get. All right, we can just kind of look at the head of our data. And this is, these are what our numbers look like. Okay, and, uh, and it imported everything as floats. So, you know, the year 1959, Point zero to kind of indicate that it is a float. Quarter one, um, and then we've got these numbers for GDP, consumption. What are these things again? Uh, private domestic investment. Okay, for that and all of these other things. T bill rate, unemployment, population, inflation, and real interest rate, okay. All right, um, so here, uh, one thing we might wanna do is we might wanna change from year 1959 quarter one, which is fine, but we might wanna turn that into a date, okay? Um, so, you know, we might wanna do like January 1, 1959, and quarter two, I guess, would start April 1, three months later. All right, so uh, we'll create a time-based index of periods consisting of the year and the quarter. So we're gonna create a period index 
uh, we'll use the year. We'll use the quarter, um, and we'll uh, we'll do that. And so my period, um, it recognizes this as nineteen fifty nine Q one, nineteen fifty nine Q two. Okay, and um, we'll let's just use uh, a few of these columns. So we'll use GDP, inflation, and unemployment. Okay. And so these um, these are just kind of, well, right now, I'm just taking the names of these things. And here, I've just created an index out of it. And what we'll do is we will re-index our data to conform to these indices that we've done. So basically, I'm just subsetting my data here to just, just the, uh, the columns that I want, OK? So now I have uh, so the columns that I want. And then, um, and then I want to take the these periods that I have, right? And it says 1959 Q1, and I want to change it to a, uh, a basically a time here. And so I'm gonna. There's a we can kind of take this period index, okay? And with period index, you have a few different uh, methods, and one of them is to timestamp, and you can kind of turn this into January 1, 1959, April 1, 1959, and so on and so forth. So you can look at Panda's period index for sequence of time periods. Okay, that's what we want, period index. Um, these are how you can go, go about them. And then as far as the methods for what we can do, um, you can do two timestamp. You can also kind of specify these other things. These are, as you want to kind of define your periods, there's um, different things. You can specify the day of the year or whatever, OK? Um, and then as far as going to timestamp, um, you have a few, few options here. D for weeks or longer, target frequency, so on and so forth. OK, going back here. OK. Um, Right now, our index is just uh, a range index, zero through whatever. Um, so we want to just replace that. All right, so I'm going to just replace that with my uh, period index here. OK, so now, now I have what I want. I've got the dates. I've got uh, the GDPs here, all right? And, um, and so what we can do here is we'll we will take this and I'm going to um, stack them and that, that will create a hierarchical index, right? Outer index will be the date and then the inner index will be kind of these different different values. So this will just kind of create one giant um, series uh, where I've got kind of these three numbers at 1959, the three numbers at 1959, April 1, so on and so forth. Um, if I do this, uh, I can call reset index after stacking them. Okay, and so this will this will turn um, date and item into columns, and it will just create an entirely new index. All right, so here um, the date becomes a column, item becomes a column, and then I create an entirely new range index over here. These values over here, it just has to come up with some kind of name, so it just puts and populates zero there. Okay, so the index here is just going to be a range index going from zero to now 609. Um, I'm going to, you, you can rename the column, okay? And so I'm going to just rename the column from zero to value using, um, using dot rename. So here I'm just kind of doing some method chaining. So basically I want this exact thing but I just want to rename this column from zero to value. So I'm going to call zero, uh, rename, rename which, what, the columns, and we're going to provide it the dictionary with how we want it to be renamed. Okay, so now I've got the exact same thing that I have up here, but this column has been called value now, which we'll, which we'll want to do, okay? Um, and, well, I guess with this, you can then start creating plots, um, but it, we don't have anything, uh, but I haven't introduced plots yet. 
but um, but that that will be coming. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, all right. What's the shape of this thing? We got we have uh, six hundred nine rows and now three columns. The columns being date, item, and value. Um, if I try to unstack this, this doesn't work. Okay, unstack doesn't work anymore because um, I don't have a hierarchical index. My index is just this range index, and so um, what did it end up doing? It it ended up uh, taking, oh, it just ended up stacking. So oddly enough, instead of unstacking, it ended up stacking them all into just one even longer thing of length 1827. Um, and it created a hierarchical index. <laughs> Well, I'm not quite sure. Okay. <laughs> but, but now um I guess they all get they all got flowed into just one one big column with 1827 values. Okay. Um if you do want to kind of quote unstack this or something, right? So let's say you do have this in long form like this, and you don't have a hierarchical index, right? So when we when we stacked it, we had this hierarchical index and I could unstack it. But let's say you read in data like this and um, and you don't have a hierarchical index, but you want to perform this operation where you where you unstack it. Okay. Uh, you can do that, but now it's called pivoting. Okay. So uh, stack and unstack the, the unstack will work if you have a hierarchical index. If you don't have a hierarchical index and you want to perform a similar type of operation, then um, then uh, that will be uh, that will be called uh, pivoting the data. okay? So here um, I have date, item and value. Um, and we can pivot, all right? So we can take, um, the uh, the arguments for pivot are what is the the index, all right, and what what will be the um, the columns, okay. Um, so you have the index, the columns, and the values. So here we said the index that we want to establish. We're going to take use the date column to establish the index, and then the columns will be made out of the item, and then the values to keep will be value. Um, and so that's that's what we do. If we wanted to, we could specify and say the index will be the item, right? So then um, doing that, we will have three rows. And then I could say the columns will be the date. So now I will have 200, 203 columns, and then the values will be the values here, okay? So now I have three rows and 203 columns. So basically I'm getting the, the transpose of this thing, okay? Um, but yeah, so pivoting is like unstacking. It's just unstacking only works if you have a hierarchical index. If you don't have a hierarchical index, if your data comes in some form like this, then, um, then, you, then you pivot your data, okay? And, uh, and so that's what we have there, okay? Um, all of these things basically create new objects. Uh, none of them affect the original data. So the original data still kind of exists in this form um, or it looks like this. Or wait, not that, I guess, wherever I have. Oh, the, here it is, the data that looks like this. Okay, so... My long data look like this, and I can kind of pivot and unpivot and stack by. Okay, um, second view quiz answer will be the letter A as your second view quiz answer. All right, so we um, so that is kind of pivoting your data there. Okay, and then the last thing 
is uh, you can do kind of group by operations. And, and so um, let me just create this toy data set just so you can kind of see how it works, All right? So um, very simple. Uh, I've got a couple um, columns and I've got a couple columns kind of representing categorical variables or keys. So I've got key one, which has values A, A, B, B, and A. And key two, we've got one, two, one, two, one. So uh, we have a duplicate, A1 and A1 here, okay? But the data values themselves, we've got just some random numbers, okay? So data one, five, 11, 12, eight, and nine. Data two, I've got 11, five, 15, zero, and 16. Okay, so um, if you have something like this, you can group by... <laughs> You can um, do a group by with your data. So <clears throat> here I'm going to select the um, the column data one, and then we will group by key one. So um, we select column one. So that's just going to be this, and then we'll. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll, we'll group by and do a group by on key one. And the result of that is you get a, um, a series that has grouping information. But we haven't asked pandas to do anything with it. So again, it's kind of lazy. So it just says, yeah, I've got this object here that is ready to be grouped. Um, and so once you have this grouped thing, then you can call operations on it, like give me the mean. And so now you'll get a mean for A and a mean for B. And so for the mean for A is five, the mean of five, 11, and nine. So 25 divided by three. And then the mean for B is gonna be the mean of 12 and eight, and you get 10. You can also, um, if you, uh, just say, hey, group by, you take the data frame directly and you say, hey, just group by key one and call the mean, then it applies mean to all of the columns in your data, grouping by key one, okay? So it, I mean, I guess all of the numeric columns. So here we get for data one, the column, that column group by A, you get 8.33 and 10.0 and data two, uh, you know, 11, five and 16, the mean of that is 10.66 and then uh, 15 and zero, the mean of that is 7.5. So, um, so this is very handy, right? Um, if there's, I guess, one function you should know <laughs> from this entire lecture. So hopefully uh, you'll remember a little bit more this is probably the most important one. Just kind of data frame dot group by, you specify the column you want, and then you call your summary function like mean or whatever it is, okay? Um, so that's that's the important one. Okay, you can um, group by uh, multiple things, okay? So your group by, you can provide it two columns and you'll get, um, it will uh, it will do this. It'll create a multi-index. So we can say, hey, take column one, data one, df1, and then group by two columns and then do the mean. So you'll get um, basically a summary for A1. A1, you have the mean of five and nine. So you get seven. And then the other ones are all unique. So A2, the mean of 11 is 11, and then B1 is 12, and B2 is eight. But basically it's it's grouped by this, right? So we have four unique uh, four unique entries, A1, A2, B1, and B2, and it calculates the mean of that. So, you, you know, your group by operation can, um, can handle kind of uh, a multi-level grouping, okay? And then, you know, if you do have a multi-level uh, thing, a multi-index, hierarchical index, then all of our hierarchical index functions like unstack work just as well. And so you can say, all right, you know, the mean of 
A1 and mean of A2 and mean of B1 and B2 and so on and so forth. Um, okay, here you can, uh, if we have data that look like this, you can also group by entirely different arrays. So here I've got a um, entirely different array that goes Ohio, California, California, Ohio, Ohio. The only thing is that is necessary about these other arrays is that they are of the correct length. So here I've got five rows here. So I, I can take another um, I think someone's going for a walk. Um, I can take another array and group by um, uh, this array over here. And um, here's another length five array, and I can group by that as well. And so the, you know these don't correspond to anything, but I can just say, hey, group by states and years, and this will just kind of align them with this, uh, assuming everything's in the correct order, and it will do it as well. So here I have Ohio 2005, California 2005, California 2006, Ohio 2005, Ohio 2006, and just kind of assuming those rows. So you, you can kind of just think of it as it tacks those on and then it does a group by operation there. And, uh, and it does those things. So you, you can give it entirely new arrays that have nothing to do with it as long as it's the same length. Um, okay. And then one more thing, uh, you, you don't always, you don't have to use um, the function mean here. I've been using the function mean, but basically any of the other summary functions. So size will give you a count. So there's two of A1s and one of everything else, um, but you can do things like give me the min for each of these things and give me, um, I don't know, whatever else. <laughs> um, no, there's no p min. Um, <clears throat> does idx min work? Yeah. Um, give me the ID of whatever the minimum value is, and so on and so forth. So any of these, um, any of these things go. Okay. Uh, when the internal structure, the internal structure of a group by is that it creates um, a kind of a dictionary, okay? A series of tuples that can then be unpacked. So if I say group by key one, okay? It's gonna create um, basically these tuples, the name and the group. And so you can, you can see what I've done is I'm gonna just iterate over these things. So grouping by key one, um, this, there will be two iterations. We'll have uh, an iteration for A and an iteration for B. And so we will get um, the name and then it'll print out the group itself. So you can see um, for group A, what does it do? It's basically gonna return this data frame where we've just filtered down to rows where key one is A. And then once I have that, then I can perform whatever operations I want I can say, hey, what's the mean of data one? What's the mean of data two or whatever it is? Basically, I have um, a, a data frame that just contains that particular group, okay? Uh, then once it's done with A, then it goes to um, group B, and then it returns back a data frame with just that group there. Same kind of thing if you uh, group by, say, the other key, key two, and iterate over that, you'll get a data frame where we've filtered to um, key two. Uh, key two is one, and then uh, key two is two here. And you can see it preserves the same ordering and structure of the data, just that we've filtered down to key key two equal to one. So it's it's a lot kind of like um, you know subsetting, just to where uh, you have that particular uh, entry there. Um, and so you can you could imagine wanting to so you know I mean this is a very simple operation but you can imagine having some kind of function that you want to perform over each iteration or e each subgroup and uh, 
and this provides the uh, kind of infrastructure to do something like that. So you can set up a for loop that's going to iterate over the uh, the different, uh, you know, whatever grouping variable that you have there. Okay, so that is uh, pandas uh, group by, and um, and so yeah, if there's one thing to to take away, it's the uh, the group by operation. It's uh it's best learned just by kind of playing around with it and seeing what you can do. Um, but it it performs a lot of kind of these aggregate features and operations that are um, very handy and very useful. All right, uh, last view quiz answer is the letter E, E for elephant. Uh, and we will call it a day here. Um, have a great rest of your day and we'll see you uh, online on Wednesday.